Now, if you guys want to make films or YouTube videos uh, or you know short little skits or something like that, I've got ten pieces of practical knowledge to apply to your films. This is something that you're not going to find anywhere because it is completely my opinion and I mean my opinion is valid because a lot of these are true um, but they're not very, um, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment, but they're very practical that you guys should start to implement right away if you're making skits, YouTube videos, films, whatever you want. So the first thing, you want to always ask yourself if someone would actually do this. I have seen so many films where the characters or something happens and it's just so unrealistic. The characters would not do this. If you are writing something or if you're filming something, you're getting your friend to, to act. Just ask yourself, like, would, would anyone do this? Would anyone do this? No, like, it, it baffles my mind to just think that filmmakers think that people actually do this with so many films. So please, just ask yourself if your character or if in the scene, this would actually happen, if they would actually do this. Very important, that's why it's number one. Uh, number two, avoid any guns and any form of violence. I'm not against violence in films, it just generally does not work with student films, because we do not have the budget, we don't have the stunt coordinators, we don't have the visual effects to make it all work, we don't have the camera work. There's so much that goes into guns and violence that it just does not work with student films. I, I know this because I've done this in the past, and just, especially in the school, guys. I, I've brought guns into the school that have like big orange tips, and I've just, no, they get out. Just, it, it, there's so many complications that work, so just try and write out any sort of violence or guns, and if you need to include it into your story, just show it off screen, you know, maybe a character leaves and he comes back with a black eye. Just, just write it out, okay? Number three, don't create stories you can't make. This is a hilarious film that I watched about a uh, homeless youth and this guy was completely just out of his, out of his environment. You can see this guy's got tattered shirts, like he looks like, he looks like he's been living in the, the ghetto for years and he's in the suburban white neighborhood. So. Just don't make a western, for example, if you don't have a million dollars to spend on it, right? Work with your environment. Don't do what this guy did. And if anyone has any questions, just put up your hand if I'm talking too fast or something like that, okay? Uh, number four, no bullying. Most things portrayed now are unrealistic. I'm not saying it doesn't happen anymore, but bullying now is very different than what it was. So whenever bullying is portrayed in films, they like crumple up paper and throw it at the friend and it says loser and they point at the guy in the hallway like two feet away from him. It's just so bad. It is so bad and I hate it. So many people hate this. If you make a film like that, it's garbage. I'm telling you that right now. It's just so bad. It's been used so many times. Just avoid it altogether. I, 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 I have made like a bullying film or two bullying films. It's like one of the first ideas I wanted to do. And it's an important topic that a lot of filmmakers have addressed. I'm just saying it, it it's, it's very delicate and it, you should just avoid it altogether. Okay, number five. Film wherever there is light. Cloudy days are the best for soft light. Um, whenever I shoot outside for photography or even film, cloudy days are generally the best because you get soft light. It's kind of edgy with the rain, but it, that's, that's good. And uh, sunny days is good too, except as beginners, you guys won't know which way to shoot or like how the sun should hit your actors, so I would just recommend shooting on cloudy days or at night where there is actual light. Like you can see in the scene, they're shooting right uh, below a light, which is very smart. Okay, so if you find the light, just shoot wherever there's light. Work with the light. If you're shooting down the hallway, which by the way I don't recommend, uh, find the brightest hallway there is. Okay? Number six, no shoe tying, no eye opening, or phone shots. I. These shots are so overused and they're so bad. Um, unless, so let's go with the shoe tying one. Unless the shoe tying shot is essential to the story. So if a character's shoelace is, is broken and he ends up t like tripping on it and he kills himself because he falls on the train tracks, there's no need to include that. These are both from films I've made, by the way, so I'm just, I'm trashing myself. No eye-opening shots. They're, they're just, they're, people think they're dramatic. And they are, it's just, again, pointless unless it's serious for the story. And phone shots. No one wants to look at your two-inch screen texting your friend that you're being bullied or something like that. It's bad. Don't do it. Um, just find a way around it. Again, all my personal opinion, I'm just telling you as an experienced filmmaker, just 
avoid these things. What about an opening shot of an alarm clock going off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> opening shots of alarm That's a whole other ballpark, guys. Do not start your films, please, with alarm clocks. Opening. I should have included that. <laughs> that is so overdone. It's just bad. Just start where there's action. You don't. Need, we don't need to see your character waking up, brushing his teeth, tying his shoes, opening his eyes, going on his phone. Avoid all that. Okay, number seven. No self-discovery films or roaming films. This is another one of my films here. Uh, if your character's just roaming, doing nothing for the story, write it out. And a lot of the themes that people choose, that which we talked about earlier, is, you know, one tries to find himself. Who am I in this world? Like, who, what, who, uh, how do I work into all this? It's terrible. It's bad. Don't do that. Because it is, it, it, not only is it overused, it's just, it's very boring to watch. If you were a very experienced writer and storyteller, you could do this. It's just, as a beginner, so many people do this. I would recommend not to. Again, these are all recommendations. Number eight, I would encourage dialogue. Dialogue, if you don't know, is just characters speaking to each other in a scene. I would encourage dialogue if you actually have actors that can act. So, a lot of student filmmakers are smart enough to realize that they don't have anyone who can act, so they write out dialogue. But I, myself, and a lot of other people, are big fans of dialogue because it can move the scene forward really quickly, and it can be a lot more interesting. But if you don't have actors that can portray the dialogue correctly and realistically, then I would just recommend not doing it, okay? Uh, second last one, spend the majority of your time and effort on script and story. So we already talked about this, guys. This, does anyone know what movie this is from? Blair Witch. Blair. Yes, Blair Witch. It's a very famous movie that I recommend everyone go watch because it's a very, it's like a case study. It's a horror movie all shot on this very bad like VHS camera. The sound's okay, the video's terrible, everything's about a bad, except, I mean, the acting's good. The story is amazing and so captivating that it draws you in so well, and that's what makes this film amazing. They spent $10,000 on the budget, they made like 200 million. Because of the story, guys, that's why how important story is. Another example of this, does anyone know Sundance Film Festival? It's like one of the biggest film festivals in the world. I'm pretty sure a couple of years ago, the, the winners uh, of the film festival, they shot their entire film on a phone. So, again, it's not important what you shoot on or how long you take to edit it. It's all about story and script. So spend most of your time doing that. And then the last tip I can give here is that you should use your resources to add production value. <coughs> Choose locations wisely. So these are all screenshots <coughs> from films I have made. This is in McDonald's. This is in an abandoned warehouse with graffiti on the wall, and this is in an office space. These are all free. I found these locations with my like connections, my friends. I literally talked to my mom, like, can I film in your work? I talked to, uh, I emailed the, re the, the manager of McDonald's. I was like, yo, can I just come here late at night? They're like, sure. And then this was just uh, an abandoned place that I found. So if production value means that the overall, it's the overall value of your video or film. If you're filming just outside your house, on the street, you know, anyone has access to that. You, when you film somewhere that's completely common, your story has to be amazing to make the viewer interested. If you film somewhere like this, the viewer is already going to be interested because they, uh, they're not used to seeing something like this. Um, anyone have questions on anything that I just mentioned at all? Nothing, 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 nothing. One thing a lot of times that even is in video production, we do lots of like little short films, and some people film everything out in the hallways. Yeah. And it becomes bland and repetitive. Yeah. And as soon as they go to Fort Lang, they're yeah, forced that's, right? oh, that's another thing I want to touch on. If you're um, filming in the hallway, or if you're filming, uh, if you have to film somewhere like in the hallway or outside your house, make sure that it's motivated by the story. So the only reason I would ever film in our high school is because I'm writing a high school story, that it has to be in a high school. If you're doing anything else, wouldn't recommend it, right? Um, so here are some resources that I would recommend you guys take a picture of if you're interested in creating stories, making better stories. These are all YouTube channels. This is my channel that I've made some videos on. This video, if anyone likes watching movies, how many people like enjoy watching movies. Okay, that's, that's more than I thought. Yeah, there's a lot of people watching movies. Um, 
This video is called 120 Years of Cinema. You watch it in video production 11. Basically, it shows all the movies or like uh, the evolution of movies from 1900 to present day. And the reason why this video is important is because I personally have made it my goal to watch every single movie on this list and there's like 300 films on here and it has expanded my knowledge on film so much. If you watch movies, you'll make good movies. If you read novels, you'll make good novels. So, by watching all those movies, I have 100% become a better filmmaker. Um, so I recommend you guys check out that video. There's a list to all the films in the video. You can watch some of them because they are all amazing films. They are not just pulled out of the water. They are amazing films. And then these four rest of the channels here, these are all uh, movie analysis films. So if you've got a favorite movie, they probably made a video on it discussing the inner meaning behind it. They're really good because uh, you can, they'll be like, uh, they'll talk about themes that you can write about. They'll talk about all this great, unique stuff about story that will make you better. Uh, and then if you're not into the technical side of things, so if you don't know how to work a camera, lights, microphone, anything like that, these three channels are super good with that. Um, I've kind of stopped watching them because I've, I've kind of reached my technical peak. But Film Riot, Rocket Jump Film School, DSLR Guide, they're great if you want to learn the technical side of stuff. And then the final place is Craigslist, is where, you don't know how much time I spend on Craigslist. I spend Craigslist finding my uh, actors, I buy so much equipment off there. It's mainly for actors though, if you, you'd be surprised about how many actors will work for free just because they want to build up their portfolio. Um, you might not get the best actors, but it'll be better than your friends. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming, by the way. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the session.